live from New York, the uh, same corrupt place in which the Donald Trump trial is being uh, conducted. And of course, I hate to say that, as the former mayor of New York, but maybe I'm in the best position to explain it to you so you understand what a charade of false embarrassment and destruction of American justice this trial is. Uh, New York City, four of the five boroughs at least, are controlled by the Democrat Party as if this were a, well, it could be a fascist state. Uh, it's uh, totally controlled. It's been that way for 170 years with few exceptions. Kind of like Chicago, 60 years of Democrat mayors. They just kind of selected the most extreme one, the one that wanted to defund the police, even though they're getting killed left and right, right? So this is a, um, a city that votes uh, Pavlovian uh, Democrat, like Pavlov's dogs, uh, no matter who the candidate is, and you have to have a massive problem to elect a Republican. I was elected because we were killing more people per year than most of the wars we were in. And the mayor had, uh, the mayor had uh, gone over 2,000 murders a year for two or three years. Um, didn't seem to know what to do about it. Plus he had two major riots, including interestingly, unfortunately, and tragically a pogrom uh, a situation in which uh, uh, people were going out trying to hurt, harm, beat up, and kill uh, Jewish people. Um, massive riot in Washington Heights. And people just frightened uh, to come here and forget all the economic problems we had. That it got me elected in a very narrow election uh, as a Republican, only the third Republican elected in the 20th century. Uh, only uh, two of us remain Republicans, LaGuardia and I. John Lindsay um, got beaten down so bad he became a Democrat after six years as a Republican. And uh, just to put the icing on the cake, we can take it back another 100 years, and this city uh, voted against Abraham Lincoln twice. I'm giving you an idea of how, and that's, you know, that was during the era of Tammany Hall. Um, is it as corrupt as Tammany Hall? No, nothing is corrupt as Tammany Hall. Is it corrupt? You're damn right it is. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with the mayor, but uh, he rushed home from his meeting with the president, a meeting he's been trying to get for six months, because his, um, his chief fundraiser was uh, raided by the FBI for taking allegedly uh, illegal campaign contributions from the Turkish government and other things. Now he may or may not be guilty, and we'll have to see. But um, if you're asking me, is a Democratic Party corrupt in New York and in Albany? Wow. And where it gets really corrupt is at the county uh, level where the boss uh, lives. That's the county boss. Uh, I sort of became famous putting them in jail. And um, the reason I'm telling you this is when you hear judge, you sort of think of somebody selected because of their uh, uh, extraordinary uh, legal abilities or extraordinary integrity or something like that. that. That doesn't happen in New York. That'd be a joke. They get selected by the Democrat uh, county leader, the guy who runs the Democratic Party in Manhattan or in the Bronx or in Brooklyn or in Queens. That's the guy who makes most of the deals. Uh, a fair number of them have gone to jail. In most cases, there are Democratic district attorneys and even U.S. attorneys. They don't pay any attention to it. Look at all the money de Blasio's wife walked away with and nobody investigated. Look at the bribe that Dinkins took and nobody in indicted him. Uh, it's a little like, you know, it's a little like what goes on with Biden. Not, not as bad, but something like that. And, and the judges are political operatives. They're not, um, they're not su necessarily superior lawyers. They certainly aren't superior in terms of 
background, I mean, again, they're a product of the political machine, which is not a good thing to be a product of in New York because it's a crooked political machine by and large. I learned in law school that you should never expect to win if you didn't represent a Democrat, never should have had a win an election case because even the judges who are honest uh, have to cave into the Democrat Party on an election case. Otherwise, they're not going to go anywhere. I learned that from several professors at NYU, and I've never seen a, uh, an exception to that in all my years in New York, including what they just did with redistricting. And uh, in which they're going to try to turn around a clear case of unconstitutionality by uh, moving judges around. So the judge we're talking about, N. Garan, N. He's a pure product of this political machine. Uh, it started off with him being a law clerk to a Democrat judge. That's often the way they start. Then he ran for uh, the civil court, which is. The two lowest courts in New York are the civil court and the criminal court. Person on a civil court is elected. Person on a criminal court is appointed by the mayor. Um, civil court, he was elected to the civil court, nominated uh, at the, at the uh, direction of the Democratic boss in Manhattan, and, and he won. It must have been a really, really great victory. He wasn't opposed. What does that sound like? Wasn't opposed. China? Soviet Union. Now I'm going to give you an interesting fact. He's run twice again. Uh, Engeron, uh, who seems to get very, very sensitive whenever you say anything about his law clerk, uh, maybe because he was one, has never been opposed. As far as I can tell in any election, he gets selected by the Democratic boss in Manhattan and put on the bench without opposition. And like many of the judges in uh, New York, aside from Staten Island, they're appointed. It is a farce that they're elected. The election is a way to make it appear as if you select them, but you don't have anybody else to vote for. So, yeah, Engeron was elected with nobody running against him, which sounds like the only way he would get elected because, honestly, to me, dear judge, you sound like a wacko. And I know, I know I'm a suspended lawyer and you want to disbar me and you're bringing about as dishonest and crooked a case against me as you can imagine. And I got the same problems that you would imagine I would have in a, a democratic dictatorship. But you know I don't care. I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't fool yourself. When you hear the word New York Supreme Court justice and it applies to one of the four counties, you're going to get an exception here and there. But by and large, it can pretty much count on a uh, moron like Engeron to be on the bench. Uh, and if not a moron, then a creature of the uh, political system who will not give you an independent decision. Now, they're all going to cry and yell and scream, and they're going to say, this is unfair. I guess if I was in court, they'd try to hold me in contempt in violation of my First Amendment rights. I just told you the straight out honest truth about what is a court that, see what this means, stinks to high heaven. Some exceptions, not many. And when it comes to a political case, then they really are few and far between. So, I mean, he's already indicated how biased he is. Let's take one decision that is almost you almost should remove him just for making this decision. And that is valuing and accepting a valuation of Mar-a-Lago at $18 million. Now, I don't think, and if I'm wrong, then I will apologize. I don't think he ever went to look at Mar-a-Lago. I don't know that he ever went to look at comparable values in Palm Beach. I don't know that he made any kind of independent judgment. He may have sent his law clerk, who seems to keep passing him notes and telling him what to say, kind of like Biden. Every time he says something, which he considers to be significant, wise, it isn't. I mean, it's all quite stupid. Uh, it comes from her. She hands it to him. And then he reads it. And a couple of times, uh, the lawyers have wondered what, you know, what, what's going on, judge? 
<laughs> what is this? What is going on? I mean, is she a ventriloquist or something? Oh, man, he went crazy when Trump did that. He went crazy when Trump raised that. Why can't you raise that? What's wrong with that? Why, why can't you say, Judge, uh, what, you don't, don't you have your own mind? What the heck's going on here? Well, how come she's got to give you notes all the time? Was this like a secret, secret trial? <laughs> I mean, the damn trial is bad enough. You've already, uh, you've, you've, you've already decided, before the trial, you decided he was guilty and found him liable. <laughs> we know this is like um, Roy B, Judge Roy Bean, you know. We, come on, let's get this trial over with quickly so I can hang you. But... 18 million from Mar-a-Lago? Okay, so we were down in Palm Beach last week and we decided we would do the thing that an honest, reasonable, sensible judge would do. We'd ask for comparable comparables. That's how you determine real estate value. He, he was looking at tax assessments. Tax assessments are often one-tenth the actual value that you could get for the property. I shouldn't say often, but often enough. Uh, they bear very little relationship to the market. They don't know the market. They don't go out and assess the market. And they usually, it's, they're artificial because they're moved up slowly so that people don't uh, have to pay quickly new and excessive taxes. You know, like if the market goes up, 25% in a year, which can happen in a place like Florida, right? They're not going to move assessed values up 25%. They would kill everybody if they did that. So they, they usually have a, uh, 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 a limit on how much it can move it up. And they're kept very reasonable. And except when we're in time and very bad times, uh, those, those valuations are going to be much, uh, those assessments are going to be much lower than valuations. You determine the value of real estate, uh, political hack judge, by looking at comparables. In other words, what did the house next door sell for? What did the apartment upstairs sell for? What did the apartment downstairs sell for? And then you take a look at yours compared to that. Is yours better? Is yours worse? Is yours larger? Is yours smaller? You have a couple of things that they, have, that they don't have going for them, or don't you? Does, your need, does yours need more work? But it'll give you a range. So we went out looking, and we found about, uh, quickly, we found about 10 properties that are on the market right now in uh, Palm Beach that are over 18 million. Uh, we, 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 looked at, we looked at them, uh, the whole list, quickly, and... Um, None of them. <laughs> None of them were within one tenth the value, of, or one twentieth the value of Mar-a-Lago. So let's give you. But it's easier to do this by example. There was one particular one that was valued at just under forty million, thirty-nine point nine, if I recall. I, they always love to do that, right? Thirty-nine point nine instead of forty, right? Like Why it really that? fools you. Because they think people are stupid, <laughs> um, um, and it was a it was a house. Would you call it a mansion, uh, Ted? Look, uh, just kind of you know, growing up where I did, this was a very nice house. Oh, come I don't on. Yeah, yeah, want yeah. to take away, right? I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to make people yeah, feel better. Yeah, this house. I mean, yeah. look, I could, I, I never lived in a house like if this. Is, this is a lot better than Gracie Mansion. I'll tell you that. It's a very nice house. So, would you call it a mansion, though? I yes, I, I think I, I'd call it. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, the one problem has no property around it. Yeah. It's kind of boxed in. Yeah. It's a boxed in. It's an uh, interesting shape. I will say that. Yeah. But it's maybe. Hot. Let's, should we play the video? Yeah. Play the video. Play the video. I mean, uh, here I say it was like one tenth the size of Mar-a-Lago. It's actually about one twentieth the size of Mar-a-Lago when I looked at the numbers. Play a little clip here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to a property worth twice what the uh, judge in New York valued uh, Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago at, twice the value of Mar-a-Lago, seven La Costa, right here, if you can see it. 
This is it. This is it. This is the whole shebang for this would be having having lived at uh, Mar-a-Lago for a bit. I would say this would be about one tenth the size of Mar-a-Lago. This would be like uh, where you go get um, you go exit the exercise room at Mar-a-Lago. It's not even this. It's half the size of the ballroom. Um, let's point out something else about seven even though it's twice the value of mar lago No access to the ocean, no access to the intercoastal. Not a bit. No beach front where you can have lunch and you can put 20 people. No, it doesn't exist. You gotta walk to the beach that way, that way. No ballroom. <laughs> if I say, one fifteenth the size, Ted. Would you disagree with me? Uh, if that, that's you being generous to uh, seven. I want you to look over there. That's where the property ends. We're going to take pictures of Mar-a-Lago tomorrow night. That wouldn't even get you halfway to the front gate. You want to know why I am disgusted being a New Yorker when there is a judge in New York that actually believes that Mar-a-Lago is worth half the value of this. The lazy bum never came down to look. The lazy bum never came down to look. What he wants to do is smile on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Seven, what cost? Twice the value according to the either kooky or crooked judge. Twice the value, one fifteenth the size. Maybe one twentieth. Once again, it ends right there. That's it. 40 million for this. 30, oh, I'm sorry. 39.9 million for this. What was uh, Mar-a-Lago, according to uh, Judge Cookball? Judge, I laugh on the cameras? What was it? According to the Attorney General, the crooked one who was headhunting for Trump? You want to tell me the Democrats in New York are not crooked? Tell me that. How do you do this without even coming down here? You know how many more properties we're going to show you worth more than Mar-a-Lago that are one-tenth the size, one-fifteenth the size, one-twentieth the size? This one doesn't even have water access. The corruption in New York City is the reason why New York City spends more money than the entire state of Florida. And New York State spends almost two and a half times, or actually two times, the state of Florida. Because all that money goes for corruption. Judges? Say they're elected in New York City. They're actually put on there by the Democratic County leaders. They are purely political in a rotten political system, and that's where the judges come from, and Mr. Laffer Judge comes exactly from there. This is a travesty. For this alone, the case should be dismissed, and Donald Trump should be awarded millions of dollars. look at this uh it is even smaller than i realized same yeah yeah, yeah. that's even smaller uh, it's, it's, it's it, without doubt i'm being generous to cook judge if i say this is 120th the size of mar lago uh, uh then there are other factors of course that get worked into it than, than just size mar lago is one of the few properties on palm beach that has access access to both bodies of water. In fact, I'm trying, there probably are other properties that have access to both bodies of water, but I can't think of one right now. Maybe you can, you tell me. Uh, and I looked at the map quickly and I don't see one on the map. Uh, and I've never been in the market for a house in that range. So this, this was a little new to me. Um, and I'm telling you, there are another 10 like that, which we're, we're going to show you a few yeah. more of them over the week. We have one ready, but we're going to spend all our time on this. And um, I mean, this alone, somebody somebody should take this case away from this judge and say, you're making a, a, a mockery. Our system of justice is in bad enough shape with the kind of attorney general we have and Biden criminalizing it. And 
But uh, this is this is totally absurd, completely, totally absurd, and a, a pure factor of the crooked Democrat Party. And somebody should do something about the court in New York, because it's a rotten court. I mean, they talk about the the DA. <laughs> court's not much better. I mean, they're letting these people go, beating the living daylights out of people, killing people. Uh, come on. And they're all put there by the Democratic county leader. The one in Manhattan has been there for over 10 years. The one before him was there for 22 years. I mean, like in 50 years, they've had about six bosses. It used to be called Tammany Hall. And uh, it deserves the name. So, um, do you ever wonder why Trump is gagged and... Uh, and uh, 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 Letitia James waddles out every day and makes a statement and then waddles away. It's okay for her to totally prejudice the case. Well, you can't really prejudice the case. It's in front of a judge. It, I mean, it's, it would be ridiculous to have a gag order anyway since the, since the right of a fair trial belongs to the person, not to the government. There's nothing you're protecting. You, who... Who is being protected from the bad, from making a wrong decision based on bad publicity? Dopey, the judge. He's protecting himself from bad publicity. Yo-Yo is protecting, you, you do a gag order to protect the jury from hearing things that would prejudice them. Well, he's already prejudiced. I mean, we know he hates Trump. We know he's going to rule against him. Is there anybody in this world that doesn't know what his decision is already? That's why this is a show trial. I mean, the decision on Mar-a-Lago is so absurd and so ridiculous, it should be written in the law books as one of the most clear indications of a crooked judiciary. It really should. And the fact that nobody in New York is willing to correct it, step in and correct it, like somebody walk into his chambers and say, hey, crook, get the hell off the bench. Because you're making it, you're making it bad for all of us. It's like when there's a crooked cop. You know, people say how oh, it hurts all cops. When there's a judge like this, it hurts all judges. And all judges aren't like that. I am telling you, though, in Manhattan and in the Bronx and in Queens and and in uh, and in uh, 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 what did I miss? Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Staten Forget Island. Staten Island is is uh, a two party system. It goes back and forth between Republican and Democrat, so it gets a little bit. Uh, you got a mixture of Republican and Democrat judges. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know when I was mayor, there was only one Republican on the state Supreme Court. Marilyn Diamond. She was the only Republican on the state Supreme Court in Manhattan. I don't know if there are any uh, in the other boroughs. They probably are, but usually they got to make a deal. I mean, you don't, you don't, please understand these are deals that are made with the county leader. And county leaders are completely political if, and sometimes completely corrupt. I'm not accusing anybody of anything because I don't know the situation, but there's certainly the risk of that. And there is certainly a political decision, not a legal decision. And the person feels an obligation with regard to political cases. And should this guy rule for Trump, he is finished. If anyone in my case, the Bar Association rules for me, finished. Won't go to any more cocktail parties. They'll be cut out the way Dershowitz was cut out in, in, uh, uh, in Martha's Vineyard. And maybe worse. Maybe they'll be thrown out of the golden circle. I have a feeling Adams and Menendez was thrown out of the golden circle. Did it ever occur to you that Menendez's case was around for about two years? They could have indicted that guy anytime they wanted. Then all of a sudden he criticizes Biden over Iran, criticizes Biden over the border. So they dredge up the corruption case and they got him now, boy. Right, kick him right out of the golden circle. The golden circle is where, um, well, Biden and Hillary are at the top of the golden circle. They can do anything. Only thing I question is, if we proved with videotape 
and 35 witnesses that they murdered someone, would they be prosecuted for it? No. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But in any event, in any event, they've been, they've been convicted of everything. I mean, they've been accused, and the proof has been there of everything else. And, but obviously, uh, Adams and Menendez are not in that golden circle. And it seems to me that, the, that, that, that there's a lesson here. Don't criticize him. Well, Adams has been criticizing him for six months. What a jerk. Picked him right out, boy. I don't know what they're going to do to him, but they sure embarrassed him. He's headed on his way to the White House, and they go to a raid on his, on his campaign on the way yeah. to the White and House. And apparently the leak is they knew he was going to be out of town, which meant they knew where he was going. Oh. Boom. And if you look at the raids that were done by the Southern District and by Mueller, they all were timed to embarrass Trump. I mean, two of them were done when he was going off on international, major international uh, uh, events. Yeah. Of course, the New York Times and, and the crooked newspapers would never notice that. But as his lawyer, well, his lawyers knew that. In fact, every time he was going off on a big event, we were getting ready for what, what kind of line they'd come up for this one. Well, Mayor, maybe we can we can take a quick break. And on the other side of the break, uh, would you like to hear from uh, the president following his uh, Soviet style show trial today? Yeah. Yeah. What happened? What happened? What happened today with John Jango? Google. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Stay tuned to find out what happened. <laughs> Tower's foundation to live his honor's promise to do good and never forget the sacrifices America's greatest heroes have made for us. Heroes who risked their lives to keep our communities and our country safe. Heroes like United States Marine Corps Captain and Pilot John Jeremy Sachs. Captain Sachs sustained fatal injuries when his military aircraft crashed during training, killing him and five other service members. He's remembered by loved ones as courageous, brilliant, and devoted to his career, family, and friends. John is survived by his wife, Amber, who gave birth to their second daughter three months after his death. Tunnels of Towers paid the mortgage on the family home for Amber and their two daughters. The foundation has helped over 1,000 military and first responder families navigate the worst of times by removing the burden of a mortgage payment. Our nation's heroes and their families need your help now more than ever. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. T2T.org. That's T, the number two T.org. T2T.org. Please donate now. Also, the 2020 election. But no, it was a We're poll. Back. We're back. It was a poll. <laughs> and we're back. And we are back. So shall we, shall we show them the poll for a minute? Let's do it. I'll tell you why. Because I had this strange thing this morning when I saw this. I said, oh, my goodness. I, had like a, I was half asleep, half dreaming. It was like I was, I was way back in Washington about three years ago. In my, in my, one of the, we were, in, oh gosh, again, we had quarters in three different places. I think I was at the Willard. And I had someone like come up to me and bring me one of, the, one of these here. And I looked at it and I said, of course, of course we won Pennsylvania. I knew we'd win Pennsylvania. We were having 800,000 votes. They can't steal 800,000 votes. So you look at this poll, you want to you go to the poll here? You look at this poll. One could think this was the actual. Oh, should I? No, no, you're okay. You're okay. You yeah. straight, just straighten it, maybe. Bring yeah. it down a little bit. How's that? Bring it down so we can see Nevada and Georgia. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I want you to look at that because to me, to me, I looked at that and I said, I was like half asleep. I said, yeah, I probably dreamt this a few times. Yeah. You know, because now, now, now they want to put me in jail for saying these places were stolen and they want to take away my law license, bankrupt me, well, they want to do all kinds of things. Surprisingly, if they had torture, they'd want to torture me. 
But so I looked at this. So I'm entitled to have a few irrational thoughts. So I looked at this this morning and I said, of course, these are the results of the 2020 election. He was ahead by 800,000 in Pennsylvania. He won it by four points. Hmm. Well, he must have slipped a little from the 800,000. But yeah, he won. Nice. That's a nice win in what used to be a blue state. Michigan, the head of Michigan by three or four percent, was about 80 percent counted. Pretty much over. A lot more over than Arizona was when Fox called it before anybody voted. I'm only kidding. Three people had voted. Uh, So, yeah, he won Michigan. Of course he's going to win Michigan. Georgia, of course he's going to win Georgia. He's ahead in Georgia also by three or four points. Then they had a flood well, they didn't have a flood and they stopped voting and they started messing around at the State Farm Arena. I looked at the tape again last night. Man, did they mess around. I'm going to show this to you this week. I'll show you them uh, counting uh, ballots one time, two times, three times, four times. Another one, one time, two times, three times, four times. So I figured somebody had gotten to the bottom of that they had gotten around the two crooked, uh, the governor and the crooked secretary of state. And uh, look, Trump won Georgia too. Nevada, I didn't pay as much attention to. Uh, it was a good case, but I didn't have as much time for it. But I kept being assured by Rick Grinnell, lots of other people, that we won there. And we did. Look, we won. And of course, Arizona, called by Fox, when 2% of the vote was in. <laughs> I knew then something was weird, weird going on. Oh, but look, Ted, he won it by five points. He won Arizona. Oh, I take a good look at this. What does it say? The results of the. Oh, there's a poll. Oh, this is a poll. Oh, 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 Oh. I see what was happening. I thought oh, this was the results of the, the election. 20, oh, we thought we were just finally getting the accurate results of the 2020 yeah. election. I, oh, still, mayor. And they still have Wisconsin fixed. Because yeah. Biden's ahead by 2% in Wisconsin. We know we didn't win. We didn't, we didn't yeah, win there's Wisconsin. no way. But that's, by the way, uh, within the margin of error. So Trump is like, uh, this, this would be, um, well, Trump is like kicking his backside in Nevada. I mean, he's really got him good in Nevada. That's big. Yeah, what do you think? Six uh, points in Georgia. That's where the you know the governor and the attorney. What what the, about Nevada? The, sec- the secretary of state, you know. Yeah, Raffenberger. Oh man, he's going to get his. <laughs> what 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 about Nevada mayor? In your experience, why do we see them with such a? I if you want to believe the polling, it shows a big shift, right? I would argue that it's probably not as big. This you know. is a New York Times poll, and normally you'd say he's ahead by more. But I have a feeling this poll, I don't trust it, New York Times probably you can throw. I have a feeling this poll is produced for another purpose. You know what it is, right? Yeah. To get the demented guy out. I mean, send him off to the Happy Valley nursing home and let's forget about it. And somebody can help him know which direction he's going to go in and God forbid he won't press the wrong button and destroy us all. Um, And I think they, you know, this... This is to this is to convince uh, he can't win. Now, here's the other interesting thing. I don't trust. I don't trust this part of it. Yeah. So Harris, they run Harris against Trump in all these places, and Trump beats her in every one of the. He beats actually in Wisconsin also, but he beats her by about half of this. Yeah. So he beats her in all these places, but Harris runs. You know, you could say twice as good as um, as Biden, which has never been true. Um, yeah. With all with all the problems Biden has had, he's always been ahead of of of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, but now she's running like I can't remember exactly, but like let's say in Georgia, the forty nine forty three is more like. Uh, you know, 45, 44, something or 45, 43, or Trump is leading either within the margin of error or a little above the margin of error. 
And the different, only difference is he's winning Wisconsin, but he's winning Wisconsin by the same 2% that Biden is winning, which is really not winning. It's being tied. Uh, I don't trust that. I just don't think. Then if you run a generic Democrat against Trump, then the generic Democrat, I think, wins most of or all of the states. That makes sense. Generic candidates always win. When you put a name on them, they get killed, right? <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works? I always wanted to run as a generic candidate because you have nothing wrong with you, right? You're the, par- you're the party, but you're not, um, not you don't, yeah, you haven't said, you know, the stupid things that she said. You don't, you're not someone like Harris who's got all those uh, uh, violent uh, rioters out of prison so they could violently riot again or whose uh, step, uh, stepdaughter is giving money to the terrorists, even though her father's Jewish, uh, or who says things like, oh, Ukraine is a little country yeah. right next to a big country, Russia, and they don't like each other. For a long time. <laughs> Speaking of Ukraine, Mayor, uh, do you think when when President Trump says he could have that thing over in twenty four oh, hours, yeah. do you think there's uh, how do you, how do you feel about that statement and and how do you feel about Zelensky's reaction to that statement? And maybe we should play it first. Well, okay, let's play it first, and then I'll tell you my reaction to it. I think it's I think one part of it is yeah, you know, sort of hype. Um, just a statement, and the other part is really very serious. Former President Trump, who is the GOP frontrunner, has said that if he is reelected, he could end this war in 24 hours. What is your reaction and message to former President Trump about that? Former President Trump said that about 24 hours that he can manage it and finish the war. For me, uh, what can I say? So he's very welcome, first of all. President Biden was here and he, I think he understood some details which you can understand only being here. So I invite President Trump, if he can come here, I will need 24 minutes. Yes, 24 minutes, not more. Yes, not more, 24 minutes to explain President Trump that he can't manage this war. He can't bring peace because of the Putin. If, but always we have if, if he is not trying and if he is not ready to give our territory uh, for this terrible man, for, for, for the Putin. If you are not ready to give it, if you are not ready to give our independence, he, 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 can't, he can't manage it. Yes. You so have, he's very welcome. He's welcome to come to Ukraine. Other presidential candidates have obviously come to Ukraine as well. Have you had any contact with former President Trump since he left office, President Zelensky? No, no, I know, no. That's why he's very welcome. Well, I mean, a couple of really uh, uh, things about that that are very, very serious. For, uh, first of all, um, President Trump should not go to Ukraine in the middle of a war because he'll be accused of interfering in foreign policy. You can't have two presidents, and uh, Donald Trump is very well aware of that. And uh, no matter how complicated it is, and no matter how much Biden is screwing it up, uh, it'll just be worse if somebody else gets involved. I don't know what the hell those other presidential candidates were doing going there. Second, I don't know what he's talking about. He invites them there, which sounds like he wants to interfere in the election again. And Ukraine has sure as hell done enough interfering in our elections. He invites them, but for, for what do you say, 24 minutes? Yeah. We- did he say 24 yeah, minutes? He did. Not only the, no, no, he, he, I mean, that's he like did. insulting. Yeah, yeah it's insulting. Uh, but yeah, he, he could he explain to him. To come all the way there, and he says 24 minutes. He's trying to be cute. Did you also notice he said Trump can't 
manage the war? He didn't say within 24 hours. He said Trump well, I don't can't know. manage the I war. Don't know. I'm going to give him a break on some of that for speaking bad English, sure. which he's okay. entitled to. Yeah. But, the, but he did say, to, I, I can only give him 24. I'm going to travel all the way to the Ukraine. Get the heck kicked out of me for interfering in a, in a, in a war. And I get 24 minutes with this guy who I have a lot of questions for, like, hey, Zelensky, uh, where are all those documents uh, that I asked you to go look for on, on Biden that prove that he was taking money? We know you have them. We even have tape recordings from you now. And exactly, uh, why don't you get me the n- numbers of the offshore bank accounts that that woman, I got the name of the woman I can give it to, uh, the president. Why don't you give me that name? And oh, you know, I don't want to interfere in your country, but you're doing a lot of interfering in mine. Exactly how much did your former president get? 50 million or 100? That's right. Oh, and here are the names of the people that gave them to him. My friend Giuliani. You remember Giuliani? He's the one that uh, Biden said was a Russian pawn and lied and defamed him. But Giuliani's got the name of the guy who actually uh, uh, bribed your, your, you know, was the go-between for Zloshevsky and the bribe to your predecessor. How come you're not prosecuting him? Oh, and... um. Is there any reason you're not doing it because the guy who laundered all the money for Biden was your boss? You know, and was and was exiled from Ukraine until you became president and you brought him back, Kolomoisky, one of the biggest crooks in Ukraine and the big money launderer? I mean, you're so tied up in this, Zelensky. How do you have time for the war? And uh, and how much money have we given you? Could we have an audit, please, of the 130 130- uh, 130 billion we get, and you want what? You want 60 billion more? It's quite. Something. Do I look like? Do I look like? Uh, he should say. He should say. Do I look? I'm, de- I'm demented, or that you have something on me? You have. You got like Ugats on me, pal. You Is got that- everything. And <laughs> hey, you know what Giuliani tells me? He tells me you got three times more on Biden than he does, because he only has one computer. You guys have, have to have hacked all of them, and if you didn't, the Russians did for sure. And the Chinese don't even need it because they paid them off. So, I mean, will you, will you stop uh, taking money out of my country by shaking down my president? When I become president, you'll be dealing with a president of the United States. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna help you fight for freedom. But we're sure as hell not going to make your oligarchs, who are a bunch of crooks, uh, even richer than they are now. And exactly how much has your patron, Kolomoisky, gotten out of this? He sure made big fees on the money laundering. And he's worth about 30, what, 20, 30 billion. And he wasn't allowed back in the country, Zelensky, until you became president. Oh, and you remember when Giuliani was going to come to see you and I canceled it? You know why I canceled it? Because you had him set up with two organized criminals. I think I remember their names. You were hanging around with them then, organized criminals. Hmm. (laughs) Gee, I don't know. I don't know, boy. 130 billion, 60 billion more, and not a single audit. And you are the second most corrupt country in the world. And you are a creation of one of its three of one of its three or four most corrupt people. Man, must be tough. What a joke. What a shame. And what an absolute travesty to connect Israel to Ukraine. What the hell do they have to do with each other? What do they have to do with each other? Why, why, why would you hold back a penny to Israel because of Ukraine? Or give Israel a penny because of Ukraine? Or vice versa? Shouldn't they be evaluated on their own rather than as part of the usual corrupt, crooked Democrat deal that Schumer wants to do? so they can get more money for their crooks over in the Ukraine? I know exactly what you do. There is no reason in the world to connect those two countries. If you had a single honest bone in your body, you wouldn't do it. But it's the way you can make a fortune. And you creeps, you bums, have been making fortunes off wars for a long time. That's why you like wars. That's why Democrats like wars. Okay, time for us to take a short break, and we will be right back. 
Our device is something that you can plug into your television and now you can use your television as a social television type experience. So in the Portal universe, you can watch your favorite content creators videos, live streams, music. We also have TV subscriptions as well. TV so subscriptions, you uh, can also, regular channels, all the sports. Right, you can actually cut your cable from your cable subscription and get QUX TV on our QUX TV boxes and you can pay half the price that you're currently paying for your cable television subscription and you can get all the best premium TV channels and more. I mean, it's really, there's so much on there, Rudy. I mean, you've seen it. It's no, 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 I've seen it and I, I use it and it, 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 it's good. I mean, it's, it's just exactly the same except for half the price. Plus, nobody is finding out what I'm watching and that's not being reported to anybody. Right, so you have absolute privacy using this device, which you don't have on other devices out there currently on the market. This is absolutely great. QUX.TV is how you can find out about it. QUX.TV. Use promo code RUDY to receive $30 off. And we're back. So uh, this is Rudy Giuliani back again on uh, on uh, America's Mayor Live. Before we do anything else, though, I think it's time. Uh -oh. You know what we've been missing for a while? And we're getting close to Christmas, so I would get these for sure. Ah, uh, ornaments. I'm telling you, you hear that? They're empty. I'm getting them ready. They could be on my Christmas tree. Well, it's that time. It's that moment again. It's time for our balance of nature minute. We're moving up that minute. It's going to be during the seven p.m. hour. This is enough water for you. And um, if you want to have all the energy, you want to have all the energy that Rudy Giuliani has. I'm, I'm telling you, this is sun to sundown. You're seeing them now at seven p.m. But Condensed. let me tell you, the past twelve hours, what we've been doing. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, come on, you guys are seeing them now, and look, he's still. Firing away at 100% speed. How about the last 30 minutes? Yeah. That and, kind of mental energy, that's yeah. like you need rocket fuel. But this is, and again, this is 12 hours into his day, right? This right. isn't like we're just. I wish I could tell you this prevents you from becoming like Biden, but it, I don't know if it, I don't think it does. Legally, I don't know. But yeah, but. but I but, can't hey. say that. I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> but I mean, it does give you a tremendous amount of energy. It's uh, a, a ba balance of nature. It gives you all the vitamins and fruits that you need that you should be having in your diet and you're just not going to do it. So you make sure you have this. Uh, it makes up for many of those. I mean, you may still want certain supplements. I don't know. That's up to you. I'm not an expert on that. But if, if this will make up for many of those supplements so you don't have to take 45 or 50 pills a day. That's right. Three or four or five are enough. So I take, um, I actually made a little mistake today. I took one extra fruit. I usually should take one extra vegetable because i'm lower on vegetables but that's okay i can make up for it you know that's right and be sure to use that also, promo code I, Rudy. you also should try this we're gonna go i'm gonna do this tomorrow night but i just you make one of these this is really good for you this is really really good for you fiber and spice you should try i mean you should just really try it look look at all look at all what you get in there you can see it you can see what you oh you wow. get there I had it before. Yeah, I was here. it's very, very good. It expands. I mean, and if you want it, if you, it's perfectly fine with water. Yeah. I mean, I'll have it tomorrow with water, but you could have it with a, uh, with some kind of a fruit drink or a uh, carbonated uh, uh, carbonated water. You, I mean, Doctor Maria, <laughs> Doctor Maria, and so, several other doctors say, well, you really shouldn't do it with diet soda because diet soda is not good for you anyway. I don't know, like Trump, I'm a diet soda guy. When I was his lawyer and we would have those long sessions, you know, like seven, eight hours, like on Saturdays or Sundays sometimes, can't imagine all the Diet Coke we had. Oh, yeah, lots of Diet Coke. I can tell, you know, just being with you now how much we drink. The guys would be coming in. They'd bring in two at a time for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> They'd never met anybody that had as much Diet Coke as him. Well, I've met you. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, so uh, Israel is really moving along, I have to say. And I'm, ha I'm happy to see the pro I'm happy to see the progress that they're making. They are really, really moving along. They have um, they've kind of come down 
from the north into Gaza, and they've come over from the uh, they've come over uh, uh, east to west. Uh, and so what they've done is they've severed the main road north to south, which means if you want to go south, pretty much you got to go through them. Number two, they are beginning to encircle Gaza City. And they say they're going to have it done within two days. Encircle the city, isolate it, eliminate all the Hamas in the city. And then at the right time, what they're doing is neutralizing the tunnels. The right time, they'll take the tunnels out. The tunnels, in fact, one of the main tunnels is, we know, is below Al-Hafa Hospital, as well as their headquarters. So they're going to have to try and, excuse the phrase, surgically remove the Hamas people from there. Uh, They have also discovered now uh, that there is a very, very large tunnel network below the Indonesian hospital, also in the middle of Gaza City, and right next to it, rocket launchers, such that if you take out the rocket launchers, you're going to hit the hospital. Uh, And this is the way they play ball, these guys. So when you hear about civilians dying, it is not because of the Israelis. It's because the um, Hamas and the Palestinians put their people right where the rockets have to come if you're going to eliminate the threat to your country and to your women and children. Hmm. So, I mean, that's a war crime. And none of the big mouth uh, communist bums will say anything about it, including the useless United Nations, which we should have been out of a long time ago. I mean, it would hurt nothing if we were out of the United Nations. Nothing. Zero. They don't do a damn thing. And their humanitarian relief is completely corrupt. Completely corrupt. You've got the IDF now uh, uh, making... um, Recordings, and we'll get our hands on them and, and, and records of all of the humanitarian relief that's been swiped by Hamas. Most of the fuel they're operating now, we gave them. We gave them humanitarian relief. Where do these, where do these idiots come from? Hamas is going to give humanitarian relief to its citizens. They got them sitting there in front of rockets to get killed, and they're going to give them food. If, the, if they need the food for their soldiers, would Hitler have done that? Would Stalin have done that? Well, then Hamas is not going to do it. I don't even know if Hitler and Stalin used their citizens that way, come to think of it. I mean, probably they did. Wow. So, um, so what's the next steps? The next, step, the next step is to surround, get, well, they've got it about half surrounded. Surround Gaza City. They keep going in and doing hand-to-hand uh, warfare in order to take out pockets of um, of Hamas um, of, of Hamas soldiers and Hamas fighters and terrorists. And they try to do it in a way that costs the least civilian life, which means it costs more Israeli life. Tough choice. Tough choice. They're basically their theory is encircle and clear. Encircle it. Make sure nobody can get out. Come on in and get rid of they. they <laughs> General running it says they're going to wipe Hamas off the map. They're going to wipe them off the map. Now, on the other side of it, the U.S. forces that we have there are getting hit. They're getting hit. Um, could even be more than we know, and we could have more uh, uh, injuries than we know, because the number seems to have decreased. I seem to remember this number up at 28. They now say that uh, since October the 6th, there have been altogether, make sure I've got the number right, there have been altogether 30, is it 37? Uh, 31 attacks. And there have been 21 injured. I seem to recall 26 injured. And then there's a leak saying, without specification of numbers, 
that they're concealing many that have been injured. And that's a leak, not a verified number. That, that 21 injured number seems a little squishy to me. They've also dropped in their description the fact that one of our uh, contract uh, military was killed. Now, you say, well, is that serious? Yeah, that was serious enough for Donald Trump to bomb Syria. When they, uh, when uh, during the uh, war in Syria, they bombed our facilities, they injured uh, eight or seven or eight of our people, and they killed a contract officer. Uh, that's, I think that's the situation in which he bombed the living daylights out of them. They never did it again. And uh, he just excused himself from dinner with Xi, the president of, um, of uh, China. This was at Mar-a-Lago, right? Yeah, and just said, you yeah, bomb him. And then Xi finds out that he bombed the hell out of Syria. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? You think Xi might have a different opinion of him than, than Biden? This guy's did tough. he offer him ice cream afterwards? Yeah, probably did. Yeah, he offered to play golf with him too. I'm one of those big Trump cookies. Yeah, but you know what that you know what that says to the guy. I mean, the guy's the guy is a leader. He may be an evil leader, but this is leader against leader, as opposed to leader against huh, guy left back in the third grade, guy who cheated in law school, guy who likes to brag about his non-existent IQ, silly, silly man all his life, and now demented. I and mean, what a pathetic thing representing us. Awful. I mean, we're entitled to be protected. This guy's got to be protected against himself. It's nuts. And, and, and they all know he's a massive crook. He's been paying him for years. The guy's been paying him. And you expect him to negotiate with him? The guy has been paying him millions. He knows what prostitutes the family. The whole family is... A, Bunch of bums. <sighs> Unbelievable. Well, if you Unbelievable. look at this, you'll see how we're getting attacked. And and Biden and and uh, that poor excuse for a person that he has as uh, Secretary of State, uh, they're not doing anything to protect our people. Uh, one, in one case, uh, and I think it probably was at either Ur Urbil Air Base uh, uh, in the north of Iraq or Al-Assad Air Base in the southern part of Iraq. I'm not sure which one. I think they found a drone that had lodged itself into the attics of an occupied barracks. And uh, had they not uh, dislodged it, it could have gone off and killed everybody in the barracks. So the military has put it this way. It's only good luck that no American soldier has been killed not for want of trying by the, by the Iranian uh, 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 proxies. Uh, remember again, 31 strikes. If you look at the uh, map down there, you'll see not nine or 18 of them have taken place at two air bases. One up in the, that, that would be in northern Iraq, Erbil Air Base and Bashur, and then uh, down further toward the south, Al Assad Air Base. They have gotten nine attacks. The other circles, the small ones represent one attack, and the larger ones represent uh, two attacks. And you can see that most of our uh, responses are, uh, mo most of the hits on us are in Iraq. Most of the hits are in Iraq, uh, less in Syria. What have we done uh, to, 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 um, to counter this, we've hit uh, their, um, we've hit two of their targets, uh, ammunition depots, I believe in Syria. One had ammunition in it, no people. The other had no people and no ammunition. We just were unlucky. In other words, we, it's, like, it's like when Clinton blew up the empty field after the USS Cole was attacked, an act of war, and they killed American uh, military. Uh, that I always believed uh, had something to do with September 11. Uh, this kind of appeasement is of a massive scale. This is uh, dishonorable. This is horrible. This is putting the lives of our soldiers at risk. And it's because you voted for a demented creep in the White House. This would not happen under Trump. This would not happen under a decent man or woman as president. Well, that's what we got for you for tonight. 
pray for them. I pray that um, pray that they come out of it alive. Remember, the guy behind this is Obama. He's the, he's the top guy here, and we're going to show that to you tomorrow night. So God bless you, and of course, God bless the people of Israel, and God bless the United States of America.